uh, this presentation is helpful for you and uh, we have uh, a good time with each other. Excuse me, do you have, uh, uh, do you hear me? Yes, doctor, we hear you. Go on. Thank you. I start my presentation and say that the intermolecular forces and role, uh, their role in physical properties is very important. So I try to introduce uh, the types and uh, uh, different types of intermolecular forces and their role in physical properties. I know that this uh, topic is very important for the uh, for the people who like to study chemistry. All of the students and uh, participants know that the uh, atoms there are uh, classified in this table. We can we called it periodic table. Atoms can form stable units we call molecules. Molecules are produced by sharing the electrons. We have different type of molecules because of different type of interactions between atoms uh, and the, um, the, the number of the, the molecules are very uh, vast. We have different type of uh, inter intramolecular forces that are within the molecule. Due to the interactions between the atoms, we have this type of, intermole uh, this type of inter intramolecular interaction. Intramolecular interactions can be divided to three types. You can see in here that if a metal and a non-metal uh, are near to each other, a whole electron transfer is occurred, and we have cation and anion. These uh, species that have electric charge can interact with each other, and due to Coulombic interaction, we have ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are almost insolid because their interaction are very strong. So. Uh, electron transfer from a metal to non-metal leads to ionic bonding. Another type of interaction is between the non-metal, especially uh, because of electron sharing that they have. And due to electron sharing, we have separate molecules. The interaction between the uh, non-metals that share electron with each other is called covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is uh, divided two types that is related to the molecules uh, or atoms that create molecules. I mean, if two atoms that share electrons with each other or are, uh, are similar to each other, we have nonpolar covalent bonding and the molecules is called nonpolar. Otherwise, the molecule is called polar and we have covalent, polar covalent bonding. The other type of interaction between the atoms is metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is observed when a metal that has low in, uh, weak interaction with valence electrons is observed. Valence electron 
because of uh, being shielded due to the other electrons has low interaction with the nucleus. So it moves as, it looks as electron pooling, or we, see, we say that electron C we have. Electron C can have interaction with metal ion cores, and in this way, we have metallic bonding. So, when the molecules are created, we have the interaction between the molecules. Molecules interact with each other, and we have different type of the uh, phases. Please notice that without intermolecular forces, or the forces between the molecules, your flesh would drip off your bones, and oceans would be gas. So, to sum up up to here, I should say that molecular forces can be divided to intra-force molecular forces as in and intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces are within a molecule, and we call them chemical bonds. And intermolecular forces are within the molecule, are between the molecules. And sometimes we call them physical bonds. Chemical bonds were divided to covalent, were lead to covalent compounds, ionic compounds, and metals. Physical bonds may lead to different phases of a matter. Three common phases of a matter are solids, liquids, and gas. So, we can say that intermolecular forces are responsible for the existence of several different phases of a matter. The question is, what is a phase? A phase is a form of matter that is uniform throughout in both chemical composition and physical states. We know a matter includes at least three common physical states, solid, liquid, and gas, or vapor. The difference between these phases can be seen, can be seen in this figure. You see that at, molecular, uh, at macroscopic scale, we have different a special shape for solids, we have fluidity for liquids, and we see that a gas occupies whole container. From the molecular point of view, we see that because the uh, uh, strong interactions between the molecules in solid, we have an order of molecules. They are, they possess strong interaction and have a strong attraction with each other. So we call solids condensed matter. In the case of gas, we see that since intermolecular forces are very weak, the molecules can move easily. So they occupy the whole container. We see that the gas are fluids. You see that the liquids are between the solids and the gas. Their interactions are not as strong as solids and are not as weak as the uh, gas. So liquid can fluid easily. As liquid is, uh, as liquid characteristics is between solid and uh, gas, we say it's a, uh, fluid, such as gas, and condensed matter, such as solid. It means that liquids have some properties of solids, such as strong interactions between the molecules, and have some properties of gases, I mean the, mob the mobility of the molecules. In addition, Many substances have more than one solid phase. Each phase have different arrangements of its atoms or molecules. For instance, carbon has several solid phases you see here. One of them 
is hard and the other one is soft. For example, graphite is a soft matter. Black graphite is used as common pencil lead and as a lubricant. In addition, diamond is a transparent material that is used in jewelry and cutting tools. So, the different phases of a matter and the different solid phases of carbon leads to different interactions between the molecules, the different arrangements of the atoms, and the different applications of them. In addition, you can answer this question that forces between molecules govern the physical properties of bulk matter. And we can explain why CO2 is a gas, whereas SiO2 is solid, and why ice floats on water. In addition to the attraction between the molecules, the molecules also repel one another. When pressed together, molecules resist further compression. As a result, you do not sink into the floor and solid, and you can walk easily on the floor. And in addition, solid objects have a specific size and shape. In the case of uh, gases, we see that repulsions are important because they, they mean that molecules do not simply pass through one another, but undergo actual collisions. It means that the collisions and the movement of molecules in gas phase is very important and control the properties of gases. To compare the intramolecular and intramolecular forces, we should say that the energy needed to decompose a molecule is very, very high. For example, if you want to decompose uh, H2O to its atoms, hydrogen and oxygen, you need to uh, heat it and the molecule absorb energy that is about 943 kilojoule per mole. However, solids, liquids and gases can convert to each other without any change in their molecules. To explain this, let me say that one individual water molecule, for instance, cannot either be freeze nor boil. So for one molecule, we don't talk about freezing and boiling. But if we have a bulk water, we can see that the molecules stick uh, together in the process of freezing to form rigid array and the boiling may separate them from one another to form gas. So different phases of wet water don't have different molecules. They have similar molecules. The difference is because of the difference in intermolecular forces. In ice, the molecules are virtually locked in phase, in place, although they can vibrate about their position. If energy is added to ice, we can have liquid water. You see that ice absorb energy and convert to liquid water. Eventually, if you add more energy, you see that the liquid water convert to gaseous state. It means that individual molecules are apart from each other 
and interacting relatively little. Yes. Excuse me, I have a question. Do you see my uh, presentation slides? Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Doctor. It's just one picture. Oh, Oi. I have changed my my presentation. There's no, uh, just one picture we have seen. Okay. شد شريط طالعين Is it uh, correct now? Can you see the presentation or not? Yes, doctor. Yes, she's uh, right now is here. Okay, thank you. Uh, my presentation is number twenty five. 21. Is it correct? Uh, I think that. Okay. I continue. If the presentation is stopped, please let me know. Thank you. Inshallah. You see that water molecules, water absorb energy and convert to gas. Water heat of absorption, heat of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoule per mole. It means that for one gram of liquid water at 100 degrees uh, centigrade, we need 2,260 joule energy to convert it to gas. As you see, this energy is much lower than the energy for the composition of water. So, in the case of converting the phases and changing the physical states, just we overcome the intermolecular forces. And the identity of the molecule, I mean chemical identity, doesn't change. In the case of water, in this figure, you can see that different phases, gas, liquid, and solid, are present, and their difference is because of their intermolecular forces. Because of a strong interaction between the molecules in the solid, we have ordered of molecules. If we heat water and melt, a melting process is uh, occurred, we can see that water is in liquid. The difference is that since the molecules move is more easily, their interaction are weaker, so the molecules can move and we have fluidity for the liquid. If we hit the water and evaporation uh, occurs, we can see that it converts to gas. It means that the intermolecular forces are more weaker than the previous position. So the molecules can move easily. We have different type of uh, physical changes that are related to phase transitions. Sublimation, deposition, melting, freezing, evaporation, and condensation. The convert of a gas to liquid is called melting. The reverse process is called freezing. 
transforming liquid to gas is called evaporation and the reverse process is called condensation. In addition, the direct conversion of a solid to a gas without passing through a liquid state is called sublimation. The reverse of that process is called deposition. You see that. Melting, evaporation, and sublimation are endothermic process. It means they absorb energy, while deposition, condensation, and freezing are exothermic process. It means that they release heat. I should say again that water is a substance that is familiar for us and all three uh, physical states we know. So the molecules are close together in solid and liquid but far apart in gas. The molecules in solid are relatively fixed in their position but those in the liquid and gas can follow around each other. It is important to recognize that when substance such as water change, uh, changes from solid to liquid to gas, the molecules remain intact. Changes in states are due to the changes in the forces among the molecules rather than those within the molecules. So, ice, uh, water, and water vapor all have similar formula, uh, chemical formula. Most solids melt to a liquid when heated. Both solids and liquids are called condensed phases because when a gas is cooled, it condenses. It means that it becomes more compact to a liquid or a gas solid. The temperature at which it condenses depends on the strength of the attractive forces between its molecules. To express the intermolecular interactions between the molecules, uh, between the particles, we should know that the all interionic interactions can be expressed by equation one. Expression for the potential energy of two charges, Q1 and Q2, are expressed through equation number one. You see that potential energy is directly proportional to the ionic charges and inversely changes with the separation between the ions. As a result, if the ions have more charge, their interaction is stronger. In this relation, epsilon zero is a, const, a fun, fundamental constant called vacuum permittivity, epsilon zero. According to this re relationship, we can express other type of intermolecular forces. To, uh, to differentiate between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces, please let me to uh, know uh, let me show you a figure. If we have potential energy, I mean molecular potential energy, again the distance between the center, we see that intramolecular forces change according to, to this curve. And intermolecular forces have this relation with the distance. Comparing these two type of interactions shows that both of them, in, in two cases, at large distance, 
the molecules do not have any interaction with each other. I mean, the atoms are separated and the molecules are separated. If we take them together, we see that both intramolecular and intermolecular interactions decreases. It means that attractive forces dominate. At a special point, in the case of intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces, the energy is minimum. It means that the interaction between the particles is the highest, is the strongest. If we try to make particles closer to each other, we see that repulsions are dominate and interaction energy climbs sharply to high values. You see that the shape of two curves are similar, both intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces. The difference is that the minimum in the case of intermolecular forces is much shallower and at a greater distance for non-bonding interaction it occurs, while the interaction energy between the two atoms that make bond with each other is lower and we ha have the position for this minimum at a lower distance, at a closer distance. So, the deep energy well is a sign of formation bond and attractive forces, lower energies of the particles. To understand it, uh, you should say, you should consider that repulsions are effective only when two particles are very close to each other. When the particles are very close to each other, the repulsion increases sharply. This sharp dependence on separation is underlying reason why solid objects have definite, well-defined shapes. To make it more clear, let me show another figure. This figure, again, demonstrates the dependency of potential energy to the internuclear distance. This figure is special for hydrogen molecule. If the molecule, atom, hydrogen atoms are far from each other, we see that their intermolecular, uh, their um, interactions is zero. Making closer this atom together, we see at point two, we have lower energy in comparison with point one. It means that the atoms have attraction with each other according to this figure. Making closer the atom to each other, we reach point three, and we see that at this point, we have the lowest energy. This energy is called bond energy. It means that we should exert energy on the molecule to separate the atoms. In other words, the atoms release energy to bond with each other. Trying to make closer these atoms increases the energy. It means repulsion energy is dominate. To compare the some molecules, I show you another figure that explains formation of covalent bond.
ان شاء الله ان شاء الله اوكي we can see the difference between the bond energy and bond lens between hydrogen, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. It means that the difference between molecules is because of the difference in bond energy and bond lens. In addition, the same figure can be, can be considered for the case that we consider the interaction between the molecules, I mean intermolecular forces. However, the bond energy is not, is not observed in the case of intermolecular forces. We say there the well potential energy, the minimum energy, it means that the attraction between the molecules is the highest. So, According to this figure, we, this figure and previous figure, we can say that the radius between the different type of particles can be divided two, three types. Atomic radius, covalent radius, and Van der Waals radius. You see that the atomic radius is taken to be half the distance between the centers of neighboring atoms in a solid sample. For example, in the case of a metal, such as copper, we see that the, this distance is equal to 256 picometer. So, the atomic radius of copper is 128. If the element is non-metal or metalloid, half distance between this nuclei of atoms joined by a chemical bond is used. This radius is called covalent radius of the element. And in the case of the molecules or atoms, such as noble gas, that we cannot call, uh, solidify them we have Van der Waals radius. Van der Waals radius is the half of the Van der Waals distance. What is the Van der Waals distance? The Van der Waals distance is the distance between the center of the neighboring atoms in a sample of solidified gas. So, the covalent radius is shown in blue is 100 in the case of chlorine atom and its Van der Waals radius is 180 picometer. As a result, we see that always Van der Waals radius is greater than the covalent radius. Okay, we can go on to, uh, to be familiar with the in <clears throat> intermolecular interactions. The interactions between ions or molecules is called intermolecular interactions. We have different type of intermolecular interactions and typical energy can be shown in this table. You see that ion-ion interaction is observed between the ions. Ion-dipole interaction is observed between ions and polar molecules. Dipole-dipole interaction is observed when we have polar molecules. Dipole-induced dipole interaction is observed when just one molecule is a polar molecule. In the case of the molecules that are non-polar, we have London or dispersion energy. 
and there is a, a special type of interaction between the molecules that is called hydrogen bonding. In the rest of this lecture, we ex uh, speak about this type of interactions and get information, get information in detail about uh, the type of molecules that have interaction with each other, uh, the amount of energy, and their impact on their properties. You see that ion-ion interaction are the strongest interaction between the particles. In all these type of interactions, the energy depends on the particle separation inversely, the charge number of an ion, the electric dipole moment, or the polarizability of the molecule. So, according to the particles that have interaction with each other, the energy dependency changes. As this table shows, we also name the London or dispersion interaction induced dipole, induced dipole interaction. You see that this type of interaction depends on the polarizability of the molecules. And during this lecture, we learned that hydrogen bond is the best regarded as a contact interaction. To make it more clear, please refer to the table two. According to table two, we can see that average bond dissociation energy is much greater than the energy between the molecules. So, the bond energy is much greater than the intermolecular interaction between the molecules. Okay, you can go on and uh, get information about the ion-dipole interactions. Ion-dipole interactions are observed when an ionic solid is added to water. A number of water molecules, as you see, sarin, each ion, and progressively dissolve it. Partial charges of the molecule, I mean solvent molecule, replace the charges of the ions that are neighboring and uh, that are in the neighboring of the ion in solid. So ions slip into the solution with little change of energy. Polar water molecules interact with the positive and negative ions of a salt and the dissolving process observed. The, the process of uh, attraction between a solvent and a solute molecule is called solvation. If the solvent is water, this kind of attraction interaction is called hydration. So the attachment of water molecules to solute particles is hydration. Hydration of ions is due to the polar molecule. Since water has a dipole moment for each bond, we call this molecule a polar molecule. And because, this, this, because of this characteristic, we see that the interaction between anions and cations occur between the wheat water molecule. To 
understand it in more detail, please uh, see this figure. In water, the oxygen atom has partial negative charge, while oxygen atoms have partial positive charge. In the solid, we have anion and cation with full charges, full negative charge or positive charge. The partial negative charge on oxygen atom is attached by the cation and partial positive charges of hydrogen are repelled by them. So, water molecules can be expected to cluster around cation with oxygen atoms pointing toward and hydrogen atoms pointing outward. The reverse arrangement is observed around an anion. Hydrogen atoms with partial positive charge attract with anion and oxygen atom with partial negative charge is repelled by anion. So, hydration arises from the interaction between the ion and partial charges on polar water molecules. This is an example of an ion dipole interaction. To understand that the ion dipole potential energy interaction, we need to drive its relation. To drive the relation for ion dipole potential energy of interaction, we need the ion ion dipole energy, the ion ion potential energy of interaction. You remember equation one, and we speak about it. Since in the case of ion dipole potential energy of interaction, we have partial charges instead of full charge, we should replace Q with dipole moment. You know that dipole moment is observed if partial transfer of charge is occurred during the sharing electron. So instead of Q, we have mu over R. And as a result, the interaction energy between an ion and a dipole is expressed by equation number two. In this equation, Z is the charge number of the ion. Mu is the dipole moment of the polar molecule. And R is the distance between the particles that have interaction with each other. I mean the full charge of ion and the polar molecule. You see that. According to equation number one and equation number two, the interaction energy between the, uh, between the dipole molecule, between the polar molecule, I mean, and an onion, changes more quickly with distance. Why? Because Ion-ion potential energy interaction is proportionally replay, uh, is proportional with inverse of uh, distance, while ion-dipole potential in energy of interaction is proportional with to inverse of S squared distance. So. Ion dipole interaction is significant only when polar molecules are very close to an ion. 
even then the interaction is still weaker than the interaction between two ions. In addition, dipole moment of a polar molecules arises only from partial charges. So the interaction between the polar molecule and an ion is weaker than ion-ion potential energy. At large distances, the two partial charges are at almost the same distance for ion and the cancellation is nearly complete. That is, while potential energy of interaction between a point charge and a dipole fall off, falls off more quickly with distance. To make it more clear, let me show you another figure. According to figure 3, you can see the depend uh, distance dependence of potential energy in the case of interaction between ions. And if we consider the ion-dipole interaction by considering this uh, equation, we see that the oh. potential energy in the case of ion dipole is more short range than the interaction between ions. In other words, the interaction between ions is a long range interaction while the interaction between ions and dipole is to some extent short range interaction. To make it more clear, let me <clears throat> explain in other words. We know that the interaction between, the, uh, between an ion and a dipole moment depends on both ionic size, I mean R, and ionic charge, I mean Z. So, both size of ion and its charge control the extent of hydration. The strength of ion-dipole interaction is greater when dipole comes to the ion closer. Consequently, we expect that small cations are hydrated extensively than large cations. This can be cleared by uh, considering these metals. You know that the first group of periodic table are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. By going down, we see that the size of the cation increases. So, in the case of uh, uh, lithium, and sodium, we see hydrated salts, whereas potassium, rubidium, and cesium, because of their size, because their cations are larger, do not form hydrated salts. To consider the effect of charge on the extent of hydration, please consider this figure. We compare the first and second elements of periodic table. We see that potassium and barium have a similar radii. Since the charge on barium is greater than potassium, we see that Potassium salts do not hydrate it, while barium salts are often hydrated. 
The difference can be traced to the barium ions higher charge. So, to conclude this part, I should say that ion dipole interactions are strong for small, highly charged ions. One consequence is that small, highly charged cations are often hydrated in compounds. I'm ready to uh, listen your comments or questions. Otherwise, I will continue. Is there any question? Okay, I continue. If we have polar molecules, the interaction between polar molecules is dipole-dipole interaction. For this type of interaction, Consider chloromethane and chloromethane CAH3Cl with a partial negative charge on chlorine atom and partial positive charge spread over hydrogen atom. Because of its dipole moment, electric dipole moment, we see that these molecules arrange each other uh, against each other in a special shape, as you see. The molecules to have a strong interaction can be side by side or end to end. In this way, the most strongest, the highest interaction is observed. If the molecules arrange or distribute in random uh, way, the interaction would not be as we expect. I mean, the interaction would not attract highest attraction. So, in the case of dipole-dipole uh, interaction, the interaction between dipoles specifically between their partial charges is observed and they arrange in an order to have the highest interaction. In this way, they will be at the lowest energy and we call them the most stable position. To consider the dipole-dipole interaction between the molecules, Again, we refer to ion-ion potential interaction and by replacing the complete charge with partial charge according to dipole moment relation, we have the interaction between dipole-dipole. So, you see that. Dipole-dipole potential energy of interaction can be shown by equation number three. The min uh, minus uh, sim symbol shows that this interaction is attractive. As the dipole moments of the molecules are the higher, the interaction would be more stronger. In addition, you can see that the greater polarity of the molecule, the stronger is the interaction between them. I refer you to table number one. We speak about it. To make it more clear, I show you the distance dependence of potential energy between stationary dipoles. I mean, between two dipole, two polar molecules. Comparing this interaction, 
with two other type of interaction we uh, speak about them shows that this type of interaction shown in green uh, curve is more quickly fall off. I mean, if the distance between the uh, particles increases, the energy falls more quickly to zero. What is the reason? The reason is that as the distance between molecules increases, opposite partial charges on each molecule appear to merge and cancel. For us, the interaction between a pair, a point ch uh, charge and a dipole, only partial charges on the dipole appear to merge. This type of interaction can be observed between the molecules who have dipole moment. For example, between the molecules of uh, ethanol or between the molecules between a system that contains ethanol and water. The process of salvation, these polar molecules, is hydration. Though its interaction is weaker than ion dipole interaction, however, this interaction is one of the most important interaction between a solute and a solvent. Let me compare the dissolution of an ionic compound and a covalent compound in water. First of all, we consider NaCl. So, according to this field, we understand that the molecules that have electric dipole moment have interaction according to dipole-dipole interaction. What happens if these polar molecules in a gas? We know that in gas, the molecules are rotating rapidly for a perfect free rotation, attraction between opposite charges, and repulsion between uh, like partial charges cancel, and there is no interaction between neighboring molecules. So we say that a, uh, ideal, an ideal gas doesn't have any interaction between the molecules. In the case that 
the polar molecules rotate near another polar molecules and spend more time in the lower energy uh, orientation, we see that the interaction between the molecules is attraction and it uh, maximizes attraction. So, in the case of the molecules that rotate, I mean the molecules at in gas phase, neighbors linger slightly in energetically favorable in the orientations, and so the attractive interactions between opposite charges slightly outweigh the repulsive interactions between like partial charges. As a result, there is a weak net interaction attraction between rotating neighboring polar molecules in the gas phase. It turns out that the potential energy is proportional to the inverse of sixth power of separation. I mean that. According to this table, dipole-dipole interaction is in, in uh, stationary polar uh, molecules, the molecules that are in solid state, changes with the cube distance of the molecules inversely, while the interaction between the dipole-dipole, I mean polar molecules at gas phase, changes with six power, six power of separation inversely. As a result, we expect that the dipole-dipole interaction in the case of stationary polar molecules is stronger than the rotating polar molecules. It means that by doubling the distance between the molecules, the energy decreases eight times, one over eight. While in the case of rotating polar molecules, doubling the distance, decreasing energy, one over 64th. It means that dipole-dipole interaction between rotating molecules have a significant effect only when molecules are very close. In other wor words, according to this figure, we see that ion interactions that is shown in that is shown in blue is lo a long uh, long-range interaction, while the dipole interaction between rotating dipoles that is shown in red is the most short range interaction. It falls up very quickly to zero if the distance increases. By considering interaction between rotating dipole moments, we can understand why kinetic model accounts for the properties of gases so well. Gas molecules rotate almost freely and are far apart for most of the time, so any interaction between the molecules are very weak. In the case of liquid, molecules also rotate, but they are much more closer than in the gas phase and dipole-dipole interactions are correspondingly stronger. To sum up, I should say that polar molecules take part in dipole-dipole interaction. Dipole-dipole interactions are weaker than the forces between ions and fall off rapidly with distance, specifically in liquid and gas phases, where the molecules rotate. As a result, the interaction between di dipole-dipoles in solid phase, I mean 
orange figure curve is more stronger than the interaction between dipoles that are in gas phase. Up to now, we learned that the interaction are, obs are observed because of the uh, full charge or partial charges on the molecules. So, it seems that the molecules with dipole moment equal to zero, I mean non-polar molecules, shouldn't attract each other. In other words, non-polar molecules just should be observed in gas phase. However, we know that the molecules can be, these molecules can be observed in solid and liquid phase. We can observe that the noble gases that are completely symmetric in the distribution of electrons can be melted or solidified. So, we should consider the electron distribution and considering this point of view help us to understand the special type of interaction between non-polar molecules. You know that dipole mo uh, the molecules without any dipole moment interact with each other. In other words, they can exist. They can be observed in the liquid and solid stages under con certain conditions. The interaction uh, observed between this type of molecules is called London dispersion force or simply London interaction. To understand this type of interaction, we should represent the electron distribution and charge distribution on the molecule or atom. You know that for a nonpolar molecule or a single atom, the electrons appear to be symmetrically distributed. In fact, at any stance, the electron cloud of atoms or molecules are not uniform. According to figure six, we can see that the electron cloud around an atom resembles a constantly moving fog with instantaneous region of enhanced or diminished electron density. Some places have high distribution of energy, I mean, uh, they are more charged, and some places are empty. They have very small amount of charge. This charge distribution changes time to time, so we have non-uniform distribution of the electrons in an atom uh, such as noble gas or in non-polar molecules such as hydrocarbons. Due to this non-uniform distribution of molecules, uh, of electrons in these molecules or atoms, we understand the origin of the forces between the atoms or molecules. To understand this, let me show that. Electrons move about nucleus, and because of the moving electron, we have a non-symmetrical electron distribution. Due to this non-symmetrical electron distribution, we see that a partial charge is observed on the surface of the atom. This partial charge can develop a temporary dipole moment. This temporary dipole moment, in turn, 
effect on the electron distribution of the neighboring atom and make a, an instantaneous dipole on it. This, these two temporary dipole moments can affect on each other and we see that the atoms can inter uh, interact with each other. The same is uh, correct in the case of the molecules. For instance, consider hydrogen molecule. We know that the electron distribution in the uh, hydrogen molecule is in a way that the molecule is non-polar. However, since the electron move around the molecule, we see that at this instance time, we have a charge distribution so that some place has high charge distribution and the another place is empty of electron. So we have a temporary dipole. This temporary dipole induce a, a, a dipole on the other molecule, the molecule that is near the uh, first one, and these instantaneous dipoles interact with each other. So, this snapshot of, the, of a molecule uh, explained that electron distribution would look like a fog at a given instance, electrons can accumulate on one part of a molecule, leaving a nucleus elsewhere, but partly exposed. And in the next instance, the accumulation is elsewhere. So, one region of molecule will have a fleeting partial negative charge, and another region will have a fleeting partial positive charge. At a later time, that is about 1.1 femtosecond later, charges may be re reversed. So the interactions continue on the molecule. Rapid fluctuation, electron distribution in two neighboring molecules result in two instantaneous electric dipole moments that attract each other. The fluctuations flicker into different positions, but each new arrangement in one molecule includes an arrangement in other that results in mutual attraction. This phenomena, this phenomenon leads to an interatomic attraction that is relatively weak and short-lived, but that can be very significant, especially for large atoms. For this interaction to become strong enough to produce a solid, motions of atoms must be greatly slowed down. This explains why the freezing point of noble gases are such low freezing points. You know, the electrons uh, move. So we have to slow down this motion of electrons. Slowing down the motion of electrons leads to lower interaction between the uh, atoms or molecules. And it leads to become a solid. London dispersion energy or London interaction acts between all molecules and atoms and is the only interaction between non-polar molecules and in monatomic gases. So the only type of interaction between non-polar molecules and monoatomic gas is London force. However, London forces are ob observed between other type of atoms or molecules. What 
are the factors that control the uh, strength of London forces? There are five factors that control the interaction between the molecules or monoatomic uh, molecules, uh, monoatomics, due to the London interaction. The first is polarizability. The other one is the number of electrons. The size of molecule, the shape of molecule, and molar mass also play a role in the strength of the London interaction. First of all, Let's speak about the polarizability. You know that the strength of London interaction depends on polarizability. So the question is, what is the polarizability? We show, uh, we show the polarizability with symbol alpha. Polarizability means how is electron cloud can be distorted in a molecule. If the electron cloud distorts easily, we say that the molecule has a high polarizability. To understand it, let me show this figure. High polarizable molecules uh, are, um, are the, that molecules that have little control over surrounding electrons, perhaps because atoms are large. And the distance between electrons and nucleus is great or is great, or because valence electrons are well shielded by inner electrons. In both cases, we see that an atom or ion, such as uh, this uh, atom, that is a large atom or ion, is a polarizable. The green sphere represents the shape of an anion in the absence of a cation. When the cation is near to this uh, anion, we see that the electron distorted. So the great shadow shows how the shape of a sphere distorted by positive charge of the cation. As a result, when a small, highly charged cation is close to a large anion, the electron cloud of anion is distorted in the process we call polarization. So, there can be considerable fluctuation in electron density and hence, highly polarizable molecules can have large instant dipole moment and strong London interactions. Detailed calculations show that the potential energy of London interaction varies as a squared of polarizability over the sixth power of separation. If the two molecules are identical and when the molecules are different, we have London interaction as this equation. Alpha 1, uh, alpha 1 multiplied alpha 2 over 6 power of separation. You see that the interaction between these uh, atoms or molecules changes inversely with the sixth power of the separation. As the molecule has the highest polarizability, its interaction energy would be the highest. So, like potential energy of dipole-dipole interaction between rotating polar molecules, the potential energy of London interaction decreases very rapidly with stance. The strength of interaction increases with the polarizability of the interacting molecules. So we expect that a large molecule with many electrons 
that has more polarizability poses a stronger London interaction than a smaller one. To understand this point, please consider pentane C5H12 that is a mobile liquid at temperature and pentadecane C15 H32 as a viscous liquid and octadecane H C18 H38 as a waxy solid. You see that the effect of increasing intermolecular is enhances is enhanced by the ability of long chain molecules to tangle with one another. As a result, we see that octet decay is a waxy solid, right? Figure Penta decay is a viscous liquid, the middle, and pentane is a mobile liquid, the left. It means that their intermolecular forces increases from left to right, so their viscosity increases. As a result, viscosity is affected by the strength of intermolecular forces. If the molecule has a long chain, the molecules tangle with each other, so the interaction is stronger, and it means that they would be observed in a waxy way. This is also true in the case of the halogens. You know that halogens changes from gases to solid at room temperature. You know that F2 and Cl2 are gas. They occupy a whole container. Br2 is liquid and iodine is solid. Going down, we see that the number of electrons increases. So, the interactions between the molecules increases and it means that London interactions increase on going down the group. The same is observed in the case of noble gas on atomics. From helium to xenon, we see that boiling point increases from 4.22 to 165. The increase of the strange of London force is observed when atoms have higher number of electrons. In addition, we see that if we have heavier atoms in a molecule, the strength of London forces increases. To understand this, let me show an example. We have methane with one carbon and four hydrogen atoms sharing electron that is gas in room temperature because it boils at minus 16 degrees of centigrade. Substituting hydrogens with chlorine atom, we have tetrachloromethane or carbon tetrachloride. We see that the boiling temperature increases to 77 degrees of centigrade. Why? Because heavy atoms have the higher 
number of electrons. Replacing chlorine with boromine atoms shows that boromine is solid at room temperature. It melts at 20 uh, at 94 degrees of centigrade and it boils at 190 degrees of centigrade. To understand this point of view, please compare different type of compounds or substances in the, for their boiling and melting points. In the case of noble gas, as we said, boiling point and melting point increases with the number of electrons since London interaction increases. In the case of halogens, the same is observed. For hydrogen halides, we see that increasing the number of electrons the size of the molecule increases the melting point and boiling point. For inorganic substances with small molecules, we see the same. And in the case of some organic compounds, the same is observed. However, in the case of hydrogen halides, inorganic substances, and organic compounds, we sometimes observe ex exceptions. In these uh, examples that you see here, HF, H2O, CH3OH are exception, exceptions. And we see that the regular order is is not traced, is not followed. I explain it in the next section. Another point that uh, I should uh, mention is that the shape of molecule has a great impact on the change of interaction between the molecules. Effectiveness of London forces also depends on the shape of molecules. You know that. Butane, pentane, and neopentane, or 2 and 2 dimethylpropane, have the same molecular formula. You see, both of them have five carbon atoms and 2L hydrogen atoms. So, they have the same number of electrons. In addition, they have the same molar mass. So, was, uh, however, uh, so we expect that these two molecules have the same boiling point, but we observe that pentane boils at 36.1 degree of centigrade and no pentane boils at 9.1 five degree of centigrade. The reason for this difference is their shape. You know that intermolecular contact changes because of the change in their molecular shape. Pentane is a long and has a long and road shape while neopentane has a spherical shape so difference in their shape leads to different in their boiling point and other physical properties The instantaneous partial charges on adjacent road-shaped molecules can be in contact at several points. And it leads to a strong interaction. In contrast, in the case of the neopentane, 
the instantaneous partial charges on this molecule cannot get so close to one another because only a small region of each molecule can be in contact. As a result, you see that the interaction between partial charges in the case of pentane observed at more region, at a large region, in comparison to a spherical shape of neopentane. So, the difference in the boiling point, for example, can be explained by the strength of intermolecular forces that are from London type. As a result, the strong dependence on the sands, as it is a result of the strong dependence on the sands, the London interaction between road shaped molecules are more effective than those between spherical molecules with the same number of electrons. Closely related to the London interaction is dipole-induced dipole interaction. Dipole-induced dipole interaction is the interaction between a polar molecule such as hydrogen chloride with a non-polar or monatomic molecule such as argon. This type of, uh, the, uh, the interaction between these two molecules is dipole induce dipole forces. It is a class uh, uh, of London forces that is observed between a polar molecule and a non-polar molecule. So, we can say that oxygen gas dissolves in water because of this type of interaction. Water is a polar molecule and can induce a dipole moment on oxygen, so we observe their interaction with each other, and the salvation occurs. You know that oxygen molecule is a nonpolar molecule because of the di presence of dipole in the water molecule and the elect lone electron pairs we have interaction between the water molecule and the oxygen molecule. Since the molecule has dipole, uh, permanent, permanent dipole moment, it can induce a uh, dipole on the oxygen molecule. So, this type of interaction is weaker than the other type of interactions. Like London interaction, dipole induced dipole interaction arises from the ability of one molecule to induce a dipole moment on the other one. In this case, the molecule that induces dipole moment has a permanent dipole moment. The partial energy of interaction is once again inversely proportional to the sixth power of the separation. According to this table, you can see that dipole-dipole interaction, dipole-induced dipole interaction, and London interaction or induced dipole-induced interaction are dependent on uh, inversely with uh, distance between the particles, and in the case of rotating polar molecules, a polar molecule with a nonpolar molecule and two nonpolar molecules, we see that the energy potential energy of potential of interaction is inversely proportional to the sixth power of the separation. So it is a short-range interaction 
in these cases. The potential energy of dipole-dipole interaction between rotating polar molecules in gas phase, the London interaction, and the dipole-induced dipole interaction are collectively called Van der Waals interactions. Because Johnson Van der Waals, as a Dutch scientist, has studied them extensively. The London interaction arises from the interaction between instantaneous dipoles in neighboring molecules and acts between all type of molecules. Its strength, as we speak about it, increases with the number of electrons and occurs in addition to any dipole-dipole interaction. Polar molecules also interact non-polar molecules by which dipole induce dipole interactions. The London interaction is universal in sense that it applies to all molecules regardless of their chemical identity. You see that in all these type of interactions, we don't have any dependency on chemical identity, regardless of their dipole moment or polarizability. So we can say that this type of interactions are universal and can apply to all molecules. A plot of normal boiling point in the case of the molecules that uh, are uh, produced by hydrogen compounds of these elements show that the boiling point increases with their periods. This is what expected. With the increasing the number of electrons, molar mass, the size of the molecule, the boiling point increases since the, the London interactions or Van der Waals interactions are more strong. This is what we uh, what uh, expect for similar compounds. However, in the case of the hydrogen compounds of elements in group 15, we don't see the same train. There is an exception, and this is ammonia compound that has higher its, uh, boiling point than phosphine, PH3. The same irregularity is observed in the case of the hydrogen compounds of elements in group 16 and group 17. To compare these hydrogen compounds of elements in groups, I show this figure. Please pay attention. You see that normal boiling point increases with the number of electrons in the case of hydrogen compounds in group 14, but ammonia, HF, hydrogen fluoride, and water are exceptions. They have higher boiling point. The information we gather up to now doesn't help us to answer this and uh, this exception. We should consider another type of interaction, this which is depend on the identity, on the chemical identity of the compound. You see that if hydrogen is present in the molecule, and we have electronegative atoms, including nitrogen, fluorine, and oxygen. These compounds 
have higher boiling point. So there is another type of interaction between the molecules that is specific to the molecules containing hydrogen atoms bonded to certain elements, nitrogen, fluorine, and oxygen. Ammonia, water, and hydrogen fluoride all show anomalous behavior. Their exceptionally highly boiling points suggest that there are usually strong attractive forces between their molecules. The strong attraction responsible for the high boiling points of these substances is hydrogen bond. What is hydrogen bond? Hydrogen bond is an intermolecular interaction in which hydrogen atom is bonded to a small, a strongly electronegative atom, hydrogen atom is bonded to a small electronegative atom and is attracted to a lone pair of electrons of another one on the, uh, the other atom. We see that because of electronegativity of the atoms, a strong pull on electrons in bond is observed. And the proton of hydrogen atom is almost completely unshielded. So this is so as this is so small hydrogen atom, it is uh, attracted by the electrons on oxygen of another molecule or fluor fluorine of another molecule or nitrogen of another molecule. Lone pair and partial positive charge attract each other strongly and form hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is strongest when the hydrogen atom is straight in is on a straight line with two hydrogen with two oxygen. You see oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen atom are in a straight line. So we have the strongest in hydrogen bond. We show hydrogen bond with dotted. So hydrogen bond in water is shown as uh, shown is uh, as shown here. We can observe the interaction energy as I uh, explained you in the case of ammonia water, and HF molecules. So we have a chain of HF molecules. We have a, a tetrahedral uh, net of H2O or ammonia molecules. <clears throat> this uh, network this uh, net of the atoms is shown by dots. And as, as I told you, the oxygen, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms that have interaction with each other should be in a straight line to have the strongest interaction. In the case of ice, we see that the OH bond length is 101 picometer and HO distance is 175 picometer. So 
hydrogen bonding is strong in the case of ice, in the case of water that is ice, I mean that is solid. So, hydrogen bonding is possible for HF or any molecule that contains NH or OH bond. You see that. Ammonia can participate in hydrogen bonding. Ammonia can participate in hydrogen bonding with water. Methanol can have form can form hydrogen bond with each other. Hydrogen bonding is very important, so it has a main role on the shape of some polymers. For example, we consider that this type of polymer should be in a, a chain, but we see it in a plate. Why? Because of the intermolecular interactions from the type of hydrogen bond between the chain. To understand this, let me to ask you a question. In your idea, which of the following intermolecular links can make the hydrogen bonds? Number one, methylene amine, two, methylene amine, number two, dimethyl ether with another dimethyl ether, number three, HBr, two HBr. Think it, think for a moment and say, which of the following intermolecular links can be made by hydrogen bonds? You see that. Because of NH bond, we have intermolecular force based on hydrogen bonding between amine molecules. So, we have this type of interaction just between class number one, not the other ones. The same is observed in the case of methanol, phosphine, and HClO. You can see that because of OH bond, we have hydrogen bonding between methanol and HClO. So, hydrogen bonding, a special kind of interaction that is observed if the molecules contain NH, OH, of, or FH bonds. Typical energy you see that is about 2N kilojoule per mole. That is observable, considerable, in comparison with other type of interactions. So, we say that if the molecule doesn't have any ion, if any ion isn't present in the substance we consider, the hydrogen bonding is the strongest interaction uh, we may observe between the molecules. We can see intermolecular forces from the hydrogen bond type in our life. Hydrogen bond is observed in the trees. The trees are held upright by hydrogen bonds. Glucose molecules are present in this molecule, in uh, this uh, substances and since the molecule has a lot uh, has many OH groups 
we see that they can form many hydrogen bond with one another. And the strength of wood is due to in is due is due in large part to the strength of hydrogen bonds between neighboring rib ribon-like cellulose molecules. If this type of interaction isn't present in these uh, molecules, the trees would collapse. Without hydrogen bonding, these trees would collapse. In addition, another example. The strength of nylon fibers is an indication of the strength of the hydrogen bonds between neighboring polyamide chain. You see that the interaction between oxygen of a chain with hydrogen connected to nitrogen of another chain makes hydrogen bonds that leads to a strength of this compound. Hydrogen bond play a vital role in maintaining shapes of biological molecules. The overall shape of a protein molecule is governed largely by hydrogen bonds. Once bonds are broken, the delicately organized protein molecule loses its function. Also, Hydrogen bonds links two chains of DNA molecule together, and so hydrogen bonding is a key to, under, uh, to understanding reproduction. Hydrogen bonds are strong enough to keep two chains of DNA molecule together, but so much weaker than typical covalent bonds. You know, covalent bonds are stronger than hydrogen bonds. So, if, an, uh, if division occurs without affecting covalent bonds, the hydrogen bonds play the main role. You see that the two strands of DNA have interaction with each other due to hydrogen bond between the bases. According to this figure, you see that guanine and cytosine have participate in, participated in hydrogen bonding and the two strands of DNA are connected through these, these hydrogen bondings. In addition, we have ion dipole force between some part of DNA with butter. I mean the phosphate part of the DNA. The base in the DNA double helix fit together. The bases in the DNA double helix fit together by virtue of hydrogen bonds that they can form. As I told you, cytosine and guanine can have, can form hydrogen bonding with each other. In addition, timine and adenine may participate in hydrogen bonding. Because of this hydrogen bonding, we see that a special shape of DNA molecule is observed. So, the helix shape of DNA is due to the presence of hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bond can be affected by temperature. Increasing the temperature reduces the number of hydrogen bonds between the molecules. For example, liquid hydrogen fluoride contains zigzag change of HF molecules. By increasing the temperature and vaporizing it, we see that the vapor contains short fragments of chains. And we have HF6 rings at vapor. 
another example. We have a strong hydrogen bond between acetic acid molecules. If acetic acid vaporizes, it contains dimers. So the number of hydrogen bond decreases and just a pair of identical molecules can interact with each other through hydrogen bonds. Another interesting example. Egg has albumins that contain hydrogen bonds. If you cook egg, clear albumin becomes milky white because as temperature rises, molecules move more rapidly and more vigorous motion breaks the hydrogen bonds in the protein molecules, which collapse into a random jump. So you see that the hydrogen bond is broken by increasing the temperature in the case of, for example, egg. To conclude, I should say that hydrogen bonding occurs when hydrogen atoms are bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atoms. This is a strong interaction from uh, the intermolecular forces because considerable energy is required to separate molecules that are strongly attracted to one another. Substances with strong intermolecular interactions have a high boiling point. A stronger intermolecular forces resulted also in higher melting points and other physical properties such as surface tension, viscosity, solubility, and other properties, especially in the case of liquids. Chemists often gain insight into physical properties through examination of intermolecular forces. So, to conclude, I should say that we learn that the attractive forces between the permanent and transient partial charges of the molecules pull them together, resulting in condensed phases. Hydrogen bond is the strongest of the non-bonding interaction. Uh, when atoms or molecules are very close together, the repulsive forces are dominated. The forces can be divided two types, bonding and non-bonding. Bondings are classified to ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. You see the base of interaction, the energy, an example for each one. Intermolecular forces are observed if the ions are present or the molecules are present. In the case of ion, we have ionic bonding, ion polar interactions, or ion induced dipole interaction. So, the non-bonding interaction or intermolecular interactions can be divided to ion dipole, hydrogen bond, dipole dipole, ion induced dipole, ion, excuse me, dipole induced dipole, and induced dipole, induced dipole, or London dispersion interaction. For each one, you see the basis of interaction, the energy range, and an example. You see that ion dipole interaction are stronger than hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond and dipole dipole interaction are comparable with each other. And the dispersion interaction is the weakest interaction observed between the molecules. In addition, you, can, you know that dispersion interaction is observed between all molecules and it is 
the only type of interaction between the non-polar molecules. So it is so weak because the molecules should induce dipole on each other. The last one, but not the least one, is that the dipole moment and boiling point have direct in uh, relation with each other. If the dipole moment of a molecule increases, dipole-dipole interaction increases. So the boiling point of the compound increases. At the end of this lecture, I hope you can predict the relative strength of ion dipole and dipole dipole interactions, explain how London forces ar arise, how they vary with the polarization of an atom and size and shape of a molecule. You, you should be able to predict relative order of boiling points of two substances from the strength of their intermolecular forces you should be able to identify molecules that can take part in hydrogen bonding and explain why solid objects have different size and shape. Thank you very much for your kind attention, especially thanks from University of Basra, Fertus University of uh, Mashhad, to have this participation and uh, special, my special uh, uh, thank is uh, toward International Academic Relations Department that has the, uh, the main uh, factor for this uh, cooperation. Thank you very much and any comment or question is welcome. السلام عليكم دكتورة فاطمة. السلام عليكم. أي السلام دكتور عبد الستار أسستين دين أهدا كوليج. Thank you very much for the great and informative lectures. I believe this information in the chemistry field is benefit and uh, have rich informations for the undergraduate students and postgraduate and also for the professor. We hope that uh, your cooperations and other professors in uh, Ferdowsi University from Mashhad cooperations with our university will continue in the futures and provided more scientific activities. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope this information helped, especially undergraduate students, to mm -hmm. understand the difference between the molecules and their physical properties. Mm -hmm. You know that this uh, information are helpful, especially, as you said, for uh, graduate stu students, since if they want to know the properties of the matters and mm -hmm. have a molecular point of view thing, they should understand the difference between the molecules and their interaction. So in my idea, especially for uh, computational chemistry, this information will be helpful. Thank you very much for your comments. Thanks a lot of once again. If there is questions, questions from anyone, Dr. Faizeh, are you there, Dr. Faizeh? Dr. Faizeh, if there is a question. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks, Dr. Fatima, for this uh, very uh, valuable lecture. 
you know, give us uh, really uh, new information about interaction. Um, my question is, Dr. Clara, uh, London Interforce, th this name comes from uh, London, the capital of London, or what? No, the name of uh, London in dispersion is not great. It's not taken from the London city. Uh, it it, so it uh, means that the interaction between the molecules uh, are due to the distribution of charge. And London in this uh, way means the distribution, charge distribution. So there is no, no relationship between the name and the, the capital name of uh, UK. To um, especially us that this kind of interaction is related to the distribution of charge. We show it in a capital uh, letter. Uh, the second question, please. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, yes. You mentioned there is interaction between ion and hydrogen. To, uh, to give uh, a new inter interaction. That's really the first time I, I hear about interaction between ion and uh, hydrogen. You mentioned that in your lecture, at the end of your lecture. You know, uh, we, we say that similar dissolved similar. However, we see that the gases such as uh, oxygen can be dissolved in uh, solvents such as water in low amount of uh, in low amount. I mean, in the, with low composition. You you see that, for example, oxygen dissolved in cold water more than in hot water. Why? Because the interaction is very weak, and the the interaction will be uh, broken will be broken due to the increasing temperature so we have this kind of interaction for a special kind uh, for low com low uh, mole fraction of the gas and as you said it is not as important as the other kind of interactions but however it exists yes thank you very much victoria you're welcome and thank you for your nice questions. Well, thanks very much. Any other questions? Yes, can I uh, ask you, Victor, uh, how can I can, can identify uh, interaction intermolecular uh, by theoretical chemistry and in, in chemist and conventional chemistry, can I that? Can yes. I determine the interaction uh, uh, hydrogen bonding by commercial computer and uh, conventional chemistry? Uh -huh. As it was mentioned in the uh, lecture, I said that in the case of hydrogen bonding, we have oxygen, for example, hydrogen, and the other atom, can, but the, which, may, uh, which may be uh, oxygen, nitrogen, or fluoride, fluorine, should be at a right line. So it is a, a sign. If you see that hydrogen, uh, oxygen, hydrogen, and the other oxygen, are in the right line, you can say that it is a hydrogen bond. I mean, you should uh, compute the angle between oxygen, hydrogen, and oxygen. If this angle is uh, close to 180 degree, it is a, a sign of hydrogen bond. Another sign is that the distance between oxygen and another hydrogen, the hydrogen of one molecule to oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen of another molecule should be less than three angstrom. If this distance is less than three angstrom, you can say that this uh, 
interaction is due to hydrogen bonding. Uh, by com computational chemistry, for example, you can uh, compute the molecular structure of your com uh, compound you study, then examine the distance between donor and acceptor. Donor is hydrogen and acceptor is, uh, excuse me, acceptor is hydrogen since it has, uh, it, it, it is proton and has low uh, electron and uh, donor is the hydrogen of another molecule. If their distance is less than three angstrom and the angle between oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen is equal to 180 degree, it means that you have very strong hydrogen bond. Thank you very much, Dr. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, sir, for your presentation. You're and welcome. for giving me and for giving me and to make a questions please i have questions and you've mentioned in your presentation some questions for calculate um, potential energy for different uh, interaction like ion ion dipole ion so you you calculate some uh, different questions in different state like um, gas and uh, liquid and solid. So as you know, doctor, you there is some liquid, some liquid uh, between between liquid and uh, solid, like uh, liquid crystal. So is there any questions can be applied for? Uh, to calculate or or for calculation uh, like uh, equation for potential uh, energy thank or you for this nice question yes. it is a very accurate question you know the relation i mentioned in uh, this lecture are the ideal questions it means if just i have a liquid and i have just one kind of interaction i use uh, every uh, equation I said you. For example, in the case of ion-ion interaction, just for two particles, we have this kind of uh, relation Q1, Q2 over uh, the distance. However, you know that in the solid or liquid, I don't have just one pair of interacting particles. We, at least we have one mole of molecules or ions that interact with each other. So the energy should be uh, gathered. I mean, the values of energy for one pair should be uh, summed up with the others to have the whole energy. In the case of liquid crystals that have the other type of interactions in addition, for example, they may have uh, uh, ion uh, dipole interaction uh, as well as dipole dipole interaction or ion uh, induced dipole interaction or other type of interaction, we yes. should consider all these terms and some of uh, some all terms with each other. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your question. And if uh, there is any question, I'm ready to answer if I can. Thank you very much.
for your cooperation, your nice questions. Thank you very much for you, Dr. Fatima, and I hope every happiness for you and your you. awards. Thank you very much. Thank you.